Isaiah 58, we'll start reading from verse number 11. Isaiah chapter 58, we'll start reading from verse number 11. The Bible says, The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and and like a spring of water whose water do not fail. Those from among you shall build old waste places. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of the streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the day, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and you shall honor him, not doing your own way, not go, uh, doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor seeking your own words. Then you shall you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of this earth, of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. May the Lord bless the reading of the hearing of His words in Jesus' name. Now, from this particular passage of Scripture, the first thing I want you to notice here is the Lord's promise to continually guide and lead His people. He said, the Lord will guide you continually. In other words, there is a promise of continuous guardian. Second thing that you see, we see here, is the Lord's promise of divine provision and sustenance for His people. He said, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. Not only that, number three, the Lord Almighty also, we also see the promise of the Lord's supernatural restoration for His people. They say, for, the, for, for uh, those from among you shall build old places. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of the streets to dwell in. The question is, why would the Lord release all these blessings upon his people? The Lord just felt that, okay, I have so much. There has to be a stimulus check for the people in the church. Why will the Lord Almighty just release the blessings of His people? What are the conditions for answer, for accessing this particular promise of the Almighty God? What must the people of God do to be able to get access to this particular blessing that the Lord is talking about in the passage of Scripture that we read? If you go back to verse number thirteen of that verse of that of that passage, the Bible said the Lord outlined the conditions for entering and accessing and enjoying the blessings of the Almighty God in verse number thirteen. We, the people of God, for us to be able to access the promise that the Lord Almighty talked about. If you look at verse number 13, the Lord said that you have to, first of all, the condition is the respect and the recognition of the, the, the Lord's Supper. Look at the, the Lord's uh, Sabbath. Look at verse number 13. He said, if you turn your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day. In other words, there has to be a recognition that a day has been set aside by the Almighty God for him. A day has been set aside that you should recognize and respect. He said, if you do that, then you have access to this blessing. Number two, the people of God can access the blessings of the promises of God for their lives and for their family if they honor and reverence that particular holy day of the Almighty God. In other words, look at that verse of the scripture, verse number 13 again. He said, you call the Sabbath a delight. The holy day of, uh, the, holy day of the Lord honorable. And you shall honor him. In other words, when you recognize that the day the Lord has set aside, and you honor that day, and you reference that day, you don't do things just because you feel like, yeah, things are just to be done. But you give respect on the day of the Lord. The Lord said, then you will have access to the blessings that I spoke to you about. And then number three, the people of God can access God's promises that he has talked about earlier in the chapter. If we sacrifice, if if we, if they sacrifice that day, to the Lord as an act of worship to the Lord God Almighty. In other words, it's not just showing up on the Sabbath, but there has to be a worship, an attitude of worship at the back of the minds of the people of God when they come to be able to celebrate that particular day. He said that not doing your own thing, not doing your own way, not finding your own pleasure, not speaking your own word, but you have to kind of rejoice in the presence of the Almighty God. And then finally, how do the people of God access the blessings of God that they talked about? The people of God can access that blessing when they, they delight themselves in the when they delight themselves in the Lord on the holy day. In other words, when they find pleasure, when they find peace, when they find fulfillment in the presence of the Almighty God. So that is when 
you begin to draw the blessings of God into your life. Okay? When we begin to delight ourselves, verse number 13, then you, will del- then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride in high places. When you delight, when you enjoy, eh, when, you, when you appreciate the fellowship in the presence of the Almighty God. In other words, when the people of God simply recognize and, res- and reference the day of the Lord. When the people of God have that particular attitude of worship and they find satisfaction in the presence of the Almighty God, in response, the Lord Almighty is saying that in recognition of that particular, in recognition of that day, because they respect that day, the Lord now promises them, number one, great honor. Look at that verse number 14. He said, then I will cause you to ride in the high hills of the earth. In other words, I will elevate you. I will give you honor. I will give you that particular, the the, the visibility, the glory that you are looking for in the earth. All you have to do is to recognize that the day the Lord has set aside and honor the Almighty God. Number two, is that the Lord Almighty, in response to the people's recognition, in response to their reverence, in response to their celebration and the honoring of the Lord on the day of the Lord, he said, the Lord Almighty said, I will feed my people with the heritage of Jacob. In other words, I will give them the things that I promised to their fathers, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. I will give them the inheritance, the promised inheritance. So look at that verse again. He said, said, you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. And to be able to give them an assurance, he said, the mouth of the Lord has spoken this. It all said he will do all these things if the people of God will simply recognize the Sabbath day, the day that he has set aside for himself to be able to enjoy fellowship with his people. He will give his people the blessings of Jacob if his people will simply make him number one priority on the day that he has set aside. Okay? It's like a celebrant. Okay? You invite people to your birthday. Or somebody's just getting married. The husband, uh, the, the bride, and the, and the bridegroom. If they are like asking you to just that single day that belongs to them, just celebrate me. Just you know, recognize that I'm the main attraction today. Don't try to compete with me. Imagine you go to a birthday party and you're competing with the person behind your cake. I mean, they look at you as something is wrong with you. Or you now decide to wear your own gown on the, day, on the wedding day or for somebody else. People begin to wonder, they're, 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 something is wrong here. And that's what the Lord is saying. Today is my day. And I want you to recognize it. I want you to celebrate it. I want you to enjoy the fellowship with me. The Lord is basically asking us to be able to cause us come and enjoy fellowship with him. But we find that many do not even recognize the day of the Lord. Let alone worship and your fellowship and worship with him. Many treat the day of the Lord as common. Many come into his presence with little regard for him and for what he cares for. And why we do that? That will be a story for another day. But for today, that is not the focus of our conversation. Today, the question that we want to deal with is that, you know, that we want to deal with is that, why does the Lord attach so much importance and so much blessings that is poured on the seventh day? Why? Why is it that the Lord God Almighty has released all these blessings and attached all these blessings to the recognition and the referencing of the, of the Lord's day? Why? What is so special about that particular day? What is so special about the seventh day? What makes the Lord, what is so special about the Sabbath day that the Lord Almighty committed himself to blessing the people of God? And to answer that question, we must first understand what the Sabbath is. Okay? We must understand what the seventh day means and what it represents in the annals of the Almighty God. So what is the Sabbath? Just by basically looking at the word, the definition of the word Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. If you go to Exodus chapter 20, verse number 8, the Bible tells us that it says, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days, yo, this day, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. No, it's the Sabbath of the Lord your God. It is, in it you shall do no work. Nor you, nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, or your or no strangers who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So you see, the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Okay? 
And the idea of the Sabbath is originated by the Almighty God. It's not something that we felt, okay, let's just do Monday through Friday and then we're on Sunday, we rest. No, it was originated by the Almighty God. Go back to Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse number 1, the Bible said, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done and rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. You know, in other words, the Bible is making us to understand that there's what we see that the idea of the Sabbath is not something that man made. It was not something that anybody came up with. It was not a denominational doctrine. It was originated by God himself. The idea of the Sabbath originated by God himself. Number two, in Exodus chapter 20, the Bible makes us to understand that the Lord God Almighty codified the, uh, the idea of the Sabbath into law for his own people. He codified the law. He codified the idea of Sabbath into law. Look at Exodus chapter 20. He said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all the work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, uh, the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. In other words, this is the commandment that I'm giving you. This is the instruction that I'm giving you. On six days, do what, uh, have your field. Do whatever you want to do. But on the seventh, I need that particular day for myself. So the Lord codified it unto himself. But by the time you get to verse number 31, I'm sorry, Exodus 31. In Exodus 31, reading from verse number 16, we see that God now strengthened and sustained the idea of the Sabbath by making it an everlasting covenant. So it went from just something that the Lord Almighty did for himself, then he codified this as a relationship with his people, and now make it an everlasting covenant to be able to establish a contract between him and his people. Therefore, verse number 16, Exodus 31, 16, he said, Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. To observe the Sabbath throughout their generation as a perpetual covenant. Something that is ongoing. Something that is continuous. So when I asked the question earlier as to what is so special about the Sabbath that the Lord is willing to lavish his blessings upon those who observe it, the reason the Sabbath is special for the Almighty God, the reason the seventh day is special to the Almighty God is because it is the Lord's Sabbath. The day that he chose to rest. It is the Lord's Sabbath. Look at that Exodus 31, uh, 31 13. It says, Speak unto the children of the Lord, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep. So it's not your own. It's actually the Lord's. Okay? This is something that he reserved for himself after doing the work. He said, This is the day that I'm taking for myself. A day that I'm setting aside to be able to relax. So it is mine. And I want you to be there as the God. So the Sabbath is special to the Almighty God because it is the Sabbath of the Lord. The Sabbath commemorates the completion of the work of God. It celebrates the finishing of God's creative venture. And so it belongs to Him. And that's why He asks you to be there. Number two, the Sabbath is special and attracts the lavish blessings of God because it is the Lord's covenant with His people. It is the thing that the Lord Almighty established, a relationship that He established with His own people. Okay, he said, therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation as a perpetual covenant, a relationship that exists between us. It is a time when the Lord invites his people to keep company with him. And uh, can I, you know, and he, and, he, and he backed it up as a covenant. He's saying, if you do it, I am going to release the blessing. He already blessed and hallowed the Sabbath day right from Genesis. If you read Genesis 2, 3. He said the Lord blessed it and the Lord hallowed it. In other words, the Lord sanctified that day. So the blessing is already upon that particular day. So the Lord is not saying, it's a covenant. If you just do what I ask you to do, the blessing that I've already pronounced upon that day will begin to accrue in your life. So the Sabbath is special because it's a time that the Lord invites his people to step away from the hustle and the bustle of life and to celebrate with him and fellowship with him. So the Sabbath is special. And the Lord lavishes his blessings upon his people because it is a covenant that he established through it. And then finally, the Sabbath is special to the Almighty God. Because it, you know, because it's a sign of our separation unto him. It tells him that yes, we have done all that we're supposed to do. And now we are coming specially to recognize you as our God and to fellowship with you. A time of our separation 
unto him. It is a time that we separate ourselves from the world. A time that we focus on him. A time that we know that when God becomes the center of our attention. These are the reasons why the Sabbath is special to the Almighty God. That is why coming into his presence is very special. That's why anytime we're coming, the Lord Almighty wants our full attention. Because this is the time that he has set aside for us to be able to enjoy that fellowship. And because it is the Lord. And because it is a, it's a time of separation unto the Lord. It's a time, it is all about the covenant relationship that we have with the people of God. So that is why the Lord Almighty releases his blessing when people recognize and observe it. So you see, the seventh day is special. The seventh day is special to the Almighty God. And those who recognize that special day and the special significance that the seventh day has in the life of his people, those are the day that will begin to, those are the people who will enjoy the pronouncement of blessing that have been placed upon that particular day. The question is, why am I telling you this? Number one, I'm not telling you because it's the doctrine of the church. Okay? We do not believe that if you don't, you know, that if you don't, uh, if you don't worship on a Sunday, you will go to hell. I don't believe that. We don't believe that if you don't watch it on the Saturday, then your prayers will not be answered. We don't believe that. Okay? The reason why we are talking about this is to understand that there is what is needed in the church, the Sabbath habit. Okay? A habit of the Sabbath. In other words, and a habit that says there is a need for people of God to be separated unto the Lord just to worship Him. That's the reason why we're telling you this. I'm talking to you about, I'm telling you about the Sabbath because the Sabbath, you know, you know, because this is the seventh year. That the, that, that the Lord Almighty has been very faithful in walking with us. The seventh day, basically, that we can consider in our, in our journey with the, in our journey with the Lord. This is the month that marked the seventh year of God's faithfulness in our lives. That's why we're talking about it. We're talking about the Sabbath because the Sabbath is a special, has a special appeal to the Almighty God. When you up understand the principle of the Sabbath in the, in, in, the, in the Word of God, when you understand the spiritual implication of the Sabbath in the Word of God, you will begin to understand that there are so many things. It, 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 it occupies a special appeal in the annals of heaven. That's why we're talking about it. But most importantly, we're talking about the Sabbath because the Sabbath is blessed and sanctified by the Almighty God. And anything the Lord Almighty tells you, set aside and sanctify it and ask you to do, it will be your best interest to do it. It doesn't mean that if you don't do it, you are going to go to hell. It simply means that you are not going to get the blessing. But what we're saying is that we're talking about this because the Sabbath day, the Sabbath or the seventh day has a special appeal to the Almighty God. It has a special appeal to the Almighty God because there is a special blessing that the Almighty God speaks upon it. So you see, my brothers and sisters, there is a mystery about the seventh day. That the Lord Almighty makes available. And when I'm talking about mystery, I'm not talking about something that is so, you know, that is, uh, what do you call it? That is all out there. I'm just talking about there is a secret to understanding and to enjoying what God purpose for the seven days. And those who recognize, those who reference that particular seven day, have a way of enjoying and pulling the things that God has in store for it. That is why we're talking about it today. Okay? Now, seeing that the Sabbath day is a special day, a blessed day in the presence of the Almighty God, the question is, how do you access the blessings of the seventh day? How do you access it? Is it just by showing up in church and that's the end of the story? No. There is a way in which you, there's a, there, there are secrets to accessing, there's a way in which you tap into the deposit of blessing that the Lord Almighty has poured into it. The question is, how do you do it? How do you tap into what the Lord has deposited into that day? How are you able to be able to pull the blessing and, the, and, and all the resources that God has deposited in that day? How are you able to do it? Now, before you understand, before you are able to access the blessings of God, before the seventh day can yield all that God has purposed for it, you must first of all understand the mystery of the seventh day. There's a mystery around the seventh day. And the question is, what is the mystery of the seventh day? Okay. To be able to make life interesting to you, I'm not going to spill everything today. The mystery of the seventh day is what we're going to explore throughout the whole of this month. Okay? Throughout this month that we celebrate the seventh year anniversary of the church, of God's faithfulness in our life, we are going to be unveiling one by one the mysteries of what makes the seventh day a blessed day. <laughs> we're going to be exploring from the pages of scripture the secret of accessing the blessings of this particular seventh day. And so this morning we'll start with the first installation in the series. We we'll start with the very first mystery of the seventh day. And I'll be speaking to you about entering into his rest. 
That is true. Entering into the rest of the Almighty God for the purpose of accessing the blessings of heaven, the blessings of the seventh day, of the seventh day. So the first mystery is the mystery of rest. And we're going to be talking about how to use rest to pull out what God has already deposited, deposited in the seventh day. Open your Bible to March uh, to, to, uh, to Psalm, uh, Psalm uh, 37. Psalm 37, reading from verse number 1, the Bible says, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herbs. The psalmist now continue in verse number 5. It said, Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked scheme to pass. In other words, the scripture is saying, there is a need for you to learn how to rest in the almighty God, so that you can now begin to access all that God has in store for you. Okay? So when we talk about entering into the rest of the almighty God, what are we talking about? When we say entering into the rest of the Almighty God so that you can begin to access the blessings of the seventh day, what are we talking about? Okay? To rest is to cease to walk. To cease walk. To cease walking. Okay? To rest is to place and to release and to unload your body for another to bear. When you talk about resting, you are releasing your bla- you are releasing a body. You are placing a burden. You are unloading a particular care upon another person to be able to bear. That's what rest is all about. To rest is to e- is to be at ease, not to fret, not to be to be at peace, knowing that God is faithful to keeping His promises unto you. Resting simply means assurance of God's faithfulness. That's what resting simply means. Being confident, being unperturbed, being undisturbed. That yes, what God has spoken concerning you, that the Lord Almighty is able to do. That's what rest is all about. So when we talk about entering into the God's rest, or entering into the rest of the Almighty God, we are talking about, you know, so that we can access the blessings of heaven, we are talking about ceasing from our walk, just like the Almighty God ceased from his own walk. Or rested from his own walk. The Bible says in six days, the Almighty God did all what he has to do. And on the seventh day, he rested. And the Lord is saying, I'm asking you to do the same thing. Resting in the Lord simply means you are putting all the cares aside. And you are doing it just like the Almighty God did. Number two, when we talk about entering into the re- into the into God's rest. Uh, so as to access the blessings of the seventh day, we are talking about seizing our burden. Uh, you know, casting our burden on the Lord uh, who is able to care for you. You are saying, Lord. Here is, you know, here is my concern. Here are my trials. Here are my afflictions. I'm willing to be able to put them aside so that I can focus on you. That's what it means to rest in the Lord. To rest in the Lord means uh, to be able to, it's talking about, you know, it's talking about the, the freedom from worry, freedom from anxiety, freedom from being, you know, the, 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 it's talking about the assurance of knowing that God has your back. That's what it means to rest in the Almighty God. When somebody tells you, you're having a particular financial financial challenge. And that person says, don't worry about it. I have it. I'll take care of it. Do you go, and you know that person has the ability to take care of that problem. Do you go back worrying about it again? Do you go back looking for money to pay the same bill? When somebody has already told you, I am going to take care of it. You just relax. And that is exactly what the Lord is saying. On the seventh day, I want you to relax, come into my presence, enjoy fellowship with me because I got your back. That's basically what the Lord is saying to his people. So it's an assurance of God's faithfulness. When we talk about entering into his rest, we're talking about assurance of God's faithfulness. And making sure that we are confident that God has all these things, you know, has everything covered. This is what we mean by it. But the question is, why must we enter into his rest? To be able to access his blessings. Why? Why do you have to be at rest in his presence to be able to access the blessings that he has in store for you? My brothers and sisters, it is important for us to enter into his rest to absorb. We can access his blessing because our entering into his rest, our seizing from worry, seizing from anxiety, stopping our ability, stopping our fretting behavior, tells the Lord that we recognize and we reference him as the Lord. Okay? If somebody tells you, I am going to take care of your bill, 
and you keep complaining in the presence of the Almighty, in the presence of that particular person, what are you telling that person? They're telling you, I don't believe you. Or, yeah, I know, I know that you have good, I know you have good intention, but I don't think you have the ability to pay my bill. You don't know how much I pay? I pay a lot of money, especially for my car, for my this and this. And you start rehearsing the problem, the problem and the person keeps telling you, I will take care of it. And then you turn back and come complain again. At one point in time, guys, okay, no problem. You go and pay your bill by yourself. Since you want to worry about it. But that is what we're... It, 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 entering into the rest of the Almighty God to access His blessing, demonstrate that we recognize God and we reference Him as the one who is able to take care of us. Number two, entering the rest of the Almighty God so that we can access the blessing of God tells Him that we delight in the Lord and we honor Him. To delight in the Almighty God, say that I enjoy the company that I have with you. I enjoy fellowship with you. Anytime I come into your presence, I know all my problems are solved. And therefore, I'm not going to worry about it. That is what it means when you enter into the presence. When that's, why you, that's why you must enter into his presence to be able to get what you want. Can you imagine you walk into somebody's life? They know that you are sick. They know that you have children, you know, you have to pay your school fees. They know that your, your, your rent is due. They know that your car note is due. They know that your pantry is empty. And yet, you come into their presence and you lavish praise upon them. You lavish your attention upon them. You are not complaining in their presence. You are rejoicing in their presence. You are celebrating what they are celebrating. And if that person is a reasonable human being, which God is a reasonable human being, you say, this person, with all the problems that is going on in their life, they are still able to pay attention to me. Let me do something to help. That is on a human level. Talk less of when you are dealing with the Almighty God. So when you rest in the presence of the Almighty God, you are telling Him that I'm enjoying your company. I don't have to worry about life. I'm enjoying, I honor you. The things of life are too small to be able to take my attention away. You are telling the Almighty God that you are the thing, you are the person that is important to me. That's how you access into the, that's how you access the blessings that He has in store for you. Number three. Why must you enter into his rest to be able to get the blessings that he has in store for you? We enter into his rest to be able to get the blessings he has for us because it demonstrates our devotion and our sacrifice to the Almighty God. We're saying, I'm willing to give this particular time unto you. I'm willing to worship at your feet. Even if I have all these issues going on in my life. Even if all the troubles are mounting. I am willing to be able to stay in your presence. Enjoy your company. So that you can begin to touch me and bless me. That's what it means. You cannot come into the presence of the into the presence of somebody complaining and fretting and worrying. And that person is talking to you. You can't even hear a word of what they are saying. And you still expect that person to meet your need. It doesn't work like that. If somebody does that to you will, you, will you pay attention to that person? He wants to collect something from you. And you are giving them giving that person an instruction. Telling them about something that is important to you. That person is not listening to a word of what you are saying. And then turns around and says, eh, by the way, I need money for my school fees. And the people look at you and say, something is definitely wrong with you. Because you are not interested in what is concerned, what is important to me, but you want me to meet the needs of your own life. So we see, the point we are saying right now is that the entry, you know, entry into the rest is important because it demonstrates our devotion and sacrifice to the Almighty God. And finally, entry into the rest of the Almighty God is important because it demonstrates our confidence and our trust in the Almighty God. It demonstrates our confidence and our trust in the Almighty God. So this particular morning, the reason why we are making sure we are understanding this thing is because when we pray, when we seek the face of the Almighty God, <coughs> There are some elements that if you don't pay attention to, you find out that we are praying, but the results are not coming. On the one hand, we are telling God, I trust you, I believe in you. On the other hand, you are busy worrying. Ah, I don't know if God can do this. You know, this was a very big problem. I don't think this one is, you know, I think he's too busy answering other people. Maybe I should take care of this by myself. You are doing all that and you are praying. And God is saying, what is wrong with this human being? How can you tell me that I'm your God and yet you are not believing me? How can you try, tell me that I'm your God and yet you don't have confidence in me? How can you say I am your God and yet you are not, you are not relaxed in my presence? You are always worried. So you see, the reason why you must enter into his rest to be able to access his blessings is because you have to tell God, you have to demonstrate that you trust him. You have to demonstrate that you have confidence in his ability to meet you at the point of your need. So some might say, how, then do, how does rest give you access to the blessings of God? You might say that. How is it that you need to be rested for you to be able to get the access to the Almighty God? Resting gives access to the blessing of God because it demonstrates your faith in the Almighty God. 
If you believe God and you give something to him, you will leave it alone. It's just like if you're giving a son, you're giving your son or your daughter something that is very important. If you trust the capacity of your son or your daughter to take care of certain things, as soon as you hand it to him, you go and do something else. Why? Because you have faith in that boy or that girl that they are able to do or they are able to accomplish the task that you have given unto them. Okay? But if you don't trust the boy or you don't trust the girl, or you don't believe that they have the ability to do something. What happens? You hand over that particular project or that assignment to that girl. And then you stand on their back. And you start watching them. And this is how you do it. And some of them who are very bored say, Mommy, leave me alone. I can do this thing. You understand? As long as you are monitoring and you are micromanaging, you are telling that person, I don't trust you. I don't believe you have the ability to do this thing. I don't think you can do it the way, you, the way it should be done. And that is exactly what we do to the Almighty God. And so the only time you can demonstrate that you have faith in him, the only time you can demonstrate that you have confidence in him, the only time that you can access his blessing is to tell God, I believe in you. I trust you. I'm giving you this problem and I'm taking my eyes away from it because I know you can handle it. Okay? So resting on the Lord gives you access to the blessings of God because it demonstrates that you have faith in him. Okay? And faith is the currency of heaven. Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6 tells us. He said, but without faith it is impossible to please God. You cannot get anything from God if you don't have faith. He said, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must know that he is. And he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you don't demonstrate your faith to him by handing over and resting, forget it. You can pray until your face turns blue. And black people turn only God color. I don't know what they turn into. I know white people turn blue. But black people only God knows what they turn into. But you can pray until you, but your face turns into a different color. Nothing happens. Because you have not demonstrated that you trust the person that you are talking to. You have not demonstrated that you trust that individual. I gave an example last week. Jesus was so confident that God has his back. That he will never die in a storm. When the storm was raging, the man was sleeping. That is the that is the, the height of confidence. The height of trust. The height of faith. That God will never let me down. You have to get to that point for God to start releasing his blessing into your hand. Because if you don't trust God, how do you expect God to trust you? So you get the idea. So, rest gives you access to the blessings of God because it demonstrates your faith in the Almighty God. Number two, resting on the Lord gives you access to the blessings of heaven because it demonstrates not only your faith, but your confidence in the Almighty God. Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 4, it says, Jesus, it says Abraham was so persuaded, Abraham was so confident that God was able to raise his own son, even from the dead. He said, because I know he gave it to me when I was old, when I had no hope, I'm willing to give it back to him because I know God can bring him back up. That is the level of confidence. It's just like when you know, in those days, uh, when I was growing back home, we have this thing that our fathers used to do. They call it lottery here. But in Nigeria, they call it pool. I don't know how many people remember that thing. Where you put XXS on front of a paper. They are sitting in Lagos. They are betting on the match that is going to be played in London. They are betting on Manchester United will beat Leeds. <laughs> you know, all those kind of things. Only God knows how much people waste money in those days. But we'll go and get that thing. And, you know, they will sit down there. And be, the one that they are very confident in, you know what they do? They put a lot of money on it. Because they know that this one is a sure banker. And it's going to give them money. And they tell you the odds and all this kind of thing. There were people who specialized in all those things. But this, that's, by the, that, that's by the way. The point I'm trying to make is that the more confident they are in their betting options, in the odds, the more money they put on it. Okay? The more confident you are in the Almighty God, the more relaxed you become. Because you know why? You know God will never disappoint you. Okay? You know He will never let you down. The more confident you are, the more rested you are in the presence of the Almighty God. Know the difference. Just notice it. For those of us who are paid bi-weekly, notice your attitude 
in the second week, towards the end, middle of the second week, towards the, the second week before the check comes. Everything goes into lockdown. Because at that point in time, you have spent almost all the money. You're only looking for the money just to keep you enough. Put money in the car, uh, put gas in the, motor, in the car to drive you to walk back and forth until that Friday. And on that Friday, a new surge of confidence comes in. Why? Because the money is going to enter the bank the next day. Okay? The more confident you are, the more relaxed you are. When you see a man that is angry, that is always shouting at the wife, it's not because he doesn't love the wife. Check it very well. There's something wrong in the pocket. Okay? It may not be deep enough. Okay? Or the man might have so many things that is going on. Something is going on with the finances. The point we are making is that the more confident you are, the more relaxed you become. And accessing the blessings of God gives us, you know, uh, 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 resting on the Lord gives us access to the blessings of God because it demonstrates your confidence in the Almighty God. Number three, resting in the promise, of, resting on the Lord gives you access to the blessings of the Almighty God because it challenges the integrity of the Almighty God. What does that mean? God said, leave everything aside and come into my presence on one day. He said, I've already blessed this day. I've already hallowed this day. So you want to test it out. You say, well, God, you said I should leave everything. They called me to work. I said, I'm not going. They gave me assignments. I said, I'm not going. I said, I'm going to be in church. Lord, let's see how you do this business. That is challenging the integrity of the Almighty God. Bringing his word back to him. And say, Lord, this is what you said. You say, I should hallow this day. You say, I should come into your presence this day. You say, I should enjoy your, I enjoy your company today. I am doing it. Now, Lord, do your part. And to give you an example, the Bible tells us, when the children of Israel were marching in the wilderness, every day the Lord was pouring down water upon them, manna. And they would go out every day to go and pick up manna. To go and pick up manna. But on the, la- on the, on the, seven, on the sixth day, Okay, sorry, on the fifth day, towards the end of the day, before the, before the Sabbath day, he said they should go and gather double portion. Because on the seventh, the Lord is not going to rain out manna. But the interesting thing about that manna is this. If you keep it overnight, it will rotten. Okay? If you keep that manna overnight, it will rotten. But the one that the Lord told them to gather double, they kept it overnight and the thing was still fresh. Why? Because the Lord Almighty has to protect his own name. The Lord Almighty has to continue to tell you that I am good for what I tell you. I am able to provide for you even if you don't go into the field to gather. I am able to rain heavenly blessings upon you even when the whole world is telling you otherwise. So we get the resting on the Lord gives us access to the blessings of the seventh day because he challenges the Almighty God to fulfill his words. You are calling God. You are saying, Lord, you said this. Then do it. Okay? Number four, resting on the Lord, resting on the Lord gives us access to the blessings of heaven because it confirms to the Lord that we recognize him as our only source. When you are telling God, you are the only source that I have. You are the only one who can meet me at the point of my need. You are the only one who can touch me, who can do this thing. I have nowhere else to go. And you are demonstrating it by saying, I am not going to look at any option. I'm not going to look at any other scheme. I'm going to hold on to you. As long as you are demonstrating that God, you know, as long as you are resting upon it, you are demonstrating that God is the only one who can provide for you. Bible tells us every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of light, who with whom there's no variation or shadow of turning. You enter when you enter into his rest, you are telling him, You are my only source. I don't have anywhere else to go, it is you only. And then finally, resting on the Lord gives us access, you know, to, uh, gives us access to the blessings of hell, the blessings of the second day, the seventh day, because it holds. God accountable to fulfill his promises. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. Whatever he said he would do, he will do. But when you now rest on him, you are holding him accountable. Oh God, I left all this thing to come to you. What are you going to do about it? And God now begins to do what? Fulfill his promise. That's what it means to rest in the presence of the Lord. Now, if you if rest gives you access to the blessings of heaven, if rest is what give, open up the windows of heaven unto you, why in God's name do people find it very difficult to rest? Why? 
Why is it very difficult for people to let go, to let go of their problem, to place their issues before God and let God take control? Why is it difficult to rest in the presence of the Almighty God? Let me suggest to you that the very first reason why a lot of us are having difficulty resting is because of fear and unbelief. Fear of the unknown. Uh, unbelief in the power of the Almighty God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 19. It said we see that they could not enter into they could not enter in because of unbelief. When you don't believe God it doesn't matter what the preacher says. You will never be able to trust him. When you don't believe the Almighty God you will never be relaxed in his presence. As you are sitting down, you are thinking of where the next place to go, the next business to do, the next thing to make money. I'm not saying anything is wrong with it. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm only saying that many of us are not able to rest because of the fear of the unknown. The need to be able to take care of things on our own. The unbelief that God is not able, God is not strong enough, God is not wise enough, God is not aware enough, or God is not fast enough to deal with our issues. And that is why many find it very difficult to rest. Number two, many find it very difficult to rest because of the worry and the anxiety of life. The worries and the anxiety. What am I going to eat? What are my sons going to eat? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? You keep worrying and worrying and then anxiety cripples the creative ability of that individual and they are not able to rest in the presence of the Almighty God. You go to bed at night, you find that they twist and turn, twist and turn. The only time they are able to sleep is when they take something to be able to knock them out. And that's why you find that many people find it difficult to rest in the presence of the Almighty God or even rest generally because of fear and unbelief. Number two, because of worry and anxiety. But most importantly, because they have believed a lie. They have believed a lie and they have been deceived by the enemy. A lot of us have believed the lie that unless we do X, Y, Z, things will not be, things will not be better. Unless we run, unless we run to help our skelter, life will not come. Unless we walk ourselves to death, prosperity will be far away. But the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, if you read from verse number 11, it says, I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the stronger, bread not to the wise, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the man of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. In other words, it is not by your ability. It doesn't mean you should be lazy. It just means that if you trust your ability, you are going to fail. Because your ability is limited. Your understanding is limited. Your connection is limited. Everything you do in life is limited. The only time you are able to rise above and shine and soar into the heaven is to be able to be connected to with the unlimited God. And God is saying one of the easiest ways you can tap into the resources of heaven and release the blessings onto your life is just to trust me and relax. Just relax. That's all. Because I have this thing figured out. I'm the one that put them in motion. I am the one that created the heavens and the earth. I know the secrets. I know where the fountain of life is. And I'm saying, just trust me. And you say, no. That is, how many years ago did you do that? This is 2022. We don't do that here now. And besides, the culture has changed. We are now in evolution. You know, we know better than you, oh God. Maybe you need to update your own software. But right now, we can't, I can't just sit down here and trust you. And that is what we say to him. And that's why a lot of us cannot rest in his presence. Because we, number one, we fear and we have unbelief. Number two, because of worry and anxiety. But most importantly, because we believe the lie and the deception of the devil that he has told us over the years, through the society, through our education system, and through all the things that are, well, we expose our lives to. And as a result, we are not able to trust God because we filter the word of God through all these lies that the enemy pumps our way. Okay? We have believed what the enemy has told us. The question then is, how then do you enter into the presence of your, uh, into the rest of the Almighty God to secure His blessings into your life? How do you do it? Okay, look at Matthew chapter eleven. Matthew chapter eleven, reading from verse number twenty-eight. The Bible says, "Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." <laughs> Very simple. Okay, come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, "Take my yoke upon you." And learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. I mean Jesus has a way of talking that. When you are, when you are piling up something. And you are thinking it is one, some huge thing. It just comes with a very simple solution. 
All the trouble that you are carrying, all the trouble that you are, that is weighing you down, he said, come unto me, all ye who are labored and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? So, you'll be able to enter into the rest by placing our faith and our confidence in the one who has called him unto ourselves. You know what? You enter into the rest of the Almighty God by coming to God in faith and in confidence. That's how you go in there. You trust him. That's basically what it means. Come unto me. All you who are lay heavy, all you are labor and are heavy, and I will give you rest. If you believe what you say to him, what he has just said, then you go. But if you don't believe him, oh my God, he can give you all the picture, all the charts, how many people who came to who had rest, what is the, you know, what is the statistic from the year 2020, all back onto the year to 2081, uh, when he first came on the earth. You can give out all the statistics. If you don't believe it, you will not come. But when you believe the Almighty God, when you place your confidence in him, it is easy to enter into his rest. Number two, we enter into the rest of the Almighty God through obedience. Obedience to his word, obedience to his command, obedience to his instruction. He said, come unto me. And if you come, that is, you obey, you'll find that rest for your soul. Okay? So we enter number one through faith. We enter number two through obedience. We enter number three through surrendering. We enter through surrendering. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. In other words, you cannot enjoy the, 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 the rest that I'm talking about unless you are willing to surrender. You can't come into my house and start teaching me how to do things. I mean, I remember somebody, I had a, I had a visitor some time ago. The guy came into my house and because he had a, uh, he had a software that he can connect to the internet for cheaper, he decided to unplug my own internet. And now put his own internet there. <laughs> when I came back, I said, I tried to log in, you know, because the path was not, it didn't sync. I said, what happened here? He said, no, I thought I had the broadband. It was better. Than Do you realize that this is my house? He said, yeah. So you disconnect my line and put your own line. <laughs> <laughs> so the, what, the, point, <laughs> the point we are making is that when you want to enjoy the rest of your mighty God, you are not the one that tells God how it's going to be. That's what I'm trying to say. You are not the one who tells God, Lord, this is how rest is supposed to be. I'm supposed to have the computer on on the right, my music on the left, the internet is running, Facebook is doing, Instagram is going on, that's what rest is. And God says, okay, is that so? When you create your own universe, you can have that as rest. In this one that I'm the champion that I created, this is how I define rest. The point you are making is that you have to surrender to be able to enter in. If you are not willing to let go, if you are not willing to surrender, you are not willing to be obedient. You don't want to believe in him. Then rest will be an illusion. It will never come. And that is what we do in the church. We want to serve God on our own terms. We want to dictate to the almighty God. I want your blessing, but this is how I want it. The packet must be here, this here, this here, tall, this here, white. And it has to be this color. It has to be this gym. We dictate everything to him. And God says, okay, what about what I want? Say, don't worry about it. We can talk about your own later. But first of all, do my own. And God says, is that so? When you become God, we can have that conversation. But right now, you are still a man. You will listen to me. The point is that for us to enter into his rest, it starts, number one, with faith and confidence. Number two, with obedience to his words and instruction. Number three, with the surrendering of our will. And then four, with the confidence and trust in him that can never fail. Where you believe him and you don't have any doubt. When you are persuaded that what he tells you, he has your best interest at heart. When you have all these things going at the back of your mind, it becomes very easy to be able to enter into his rest. The question now becomes, who is the kind of person who can enter into the rest of the Almighty God and access the resources of heaven? Who is that kind of a person who can enter into the rest of the Almighty God and then draw the blessings that have been associated with the seventh day? Who is that man? Number one, the kind of, that kind of person will be the man that desires God's rest. You cannot enter into his rest unless you desire it. You have to come to the point where you say, Lord, I'm done with all this running up and down. I'm done with all this living life on the edge. I'm done with all this stress and all this hustle and bustle. I'm done with all the worries and anxiety. There has to be a desire for the rest that God provides. Okay? A time when you are totally, totally, completely Relaxed in his presence. There has to be a desire. Number two, the man who enters or the woman who enters the rest of the Almighty God is the one who appreciates what the rest of the Almighty God can do in their lives. 
When you understand that, yes, God is the one that is able to give you the rest that you want, that is when you are able to enter into his rest. Number three, the man or the woman who will enter into the rest of the Almighty God is the one that values the rest. There's a difference between you desiring and valuing something. Okay? There's a difference. When you value it, you begin to treat it preciously. It becomes very important to you. The way you manage it, the whole world will know that this thing is important to you. The way you carry it, people will know that it's important to you. When you show up in his presence, you don't waste any time. When you show up in his presence, you don't become irreverent. So, the man or the woman who will enter into the rest of the Almighty God must first of all desire, then appreciate, it, value it, and then number four, he must prioritize the rest of the Almighty God. In other words, you must take it, you must place it at the appropriate place. I used to joke and I tell people that there are some decisions that you make once and it affects everything that you do. And there are some decisions, if you wait till the last minute to take those decisions, you may never be able to do those things. And for example, if you have to wait till Sunday morning to decide whether you are going to church or not, there's a strong probability you are not going to church that day. Very strong probability you are not going. But if you have made one time decision and say, in my house, Sunday morning must meet us in church. Even if you are dying, something inside of you is prepared to go. Okay? That is what is called the priority of rest in the place. The priority of the, you know, of the Almighty God in our lives. When you place Him as number one, everything has, finds a way to align to it. But if you think that it's not important, if you think that it's expendable, what you find is that you will find a reason. The devil will give you enough reason to be able to look, enough excuses not to show up that day. And that's what you find in the church of the Almighty God. People cannot enter into the rest that the Almighty God provides for them because it is not a priority for them. Okay? It is not something that is important for them. It is not something that they consider to be important. It is not something that, far, that, they have, uh, that, they have, that they consider to be a number that, that, that should be on the front burner. And so to enter the man or the woman who will enter into the, into the rest of the Almighty God must not only desire, must not only appreciate, must not only value, but he must prioritize the rest of the Almighty God. It must be something that you actually prioritize, something that you actually place at the place of importance. But most importantly, it must be somebody who celebrates the blessings of the rest of the Almighty God. In other words, when you come into his presence, you thank God that you are there. You appreciate him that he is there, that you are there for him. You bless the name of the Almighty God because we do. Not just anybody can show up. There are people who desire to show up, but they are not here. There are those who want to be there, but they cannot make it for one reason or the other. But the fact that you are here, you thank God and say, Lord, I thank you that you have given me the privilege to be able to come into your presence. That is the kind of person that can enter into his rest. Can you imagine? Why do so many people like dogs? And some people, and most people, the people who really like dogs don't like cats. You know why? Cats are one of the most snobbish animals you can see. Those things irritate me. You see, just stand like this and look at you. <laughs> just look at you. So what is wrong with this thing? And you shakara the thing, you just go back a little bit. But a dog, you can see enthusiasm. You come in, he's already, he's already shaking. You, you know, he's, he, 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 he's only when you come into his presence and there is joy and you are celebrating his presence. What happened? They, they, you find that people give more treats to dogs than they give to cats. Nobody wakes up one day and have a chicken and you want to give to cat. Cat, look at it. You know. You first of all smell that thing and then it will call back and look at that. Those things just, that's a story for another day. Cats and dogs, different story. But the point I'm making is that the people who enter into the rest of the Almighty God are the people that celebrate the Almighty God. Can you imagine somebody who sees you? You look at two of your nephews or your cousins. And one of them, anytime he sees you, oh my God, it's always, auntie, you are this, you are that, touches your hair, looks at your clothes, admires your dress, admires your shoes. You will give that particular cousin or nephew everything you have. You will give him everything. You tell him, go to my closet, pick anything on your Because why? He's making you, he's, he's just making your day. But there's one that you give to her. So you came all the way from America. This is what you brought. Eh? This is all you brought for me. Thank you. Thank you. There was a friend of mine who was telling me he went back to Africa, he went back to Nigeria, took a shoe and gave it to the guy, and gave it to one of his friends. And the man said, I hear in America that you are able to, you are, if, you don't, if you buy something and you don't like it, you can return it. The guy said, yeah. Say, yeah, I was thinking that you can return this shoe and get it in real leather. The guy said, yeah, okay, no problem, bring it. But he gave, he gave away his disgust by his face. 
So the guy quickly looked and saw that, he, that what he said was not very good. So he said, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'll, 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 I'll enjoy it. Next time you just get it. Okay, no problem. He said, that was the first and the last time he brought something for you. The point I'm making is this. When you come into the presence of the Almighty God and you celebrate Him and you rejoice in His presence and you enjoy His fellowship and you give Him praise and you are glad that you are there and everything inside of you tells the Almighty God, I appreciate you. And there's somebody who we are begging. Clap now. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> if I were God and if you are God, who you go give something first? Eh? Just forget about God in heaven. Just look at us who are here. If you are God for one day and two people come and they are doing like that, you say, okay, when you are done, you can talk, you know, you can get what you want. But this one, let's have a conversation. You release blessings upon them. You pour out your glory upon that person. That is why the only people who are able to enter into the presence of the Almighty God are not just the people that desire it, the people that appreciate it, the people that value it, the people that make it a priority to enjoy it, but it's also the people who celebrate the blessings of the rest of the Almighty God. And so in closing, the seventh day is not about the work per se. Okay? The seventh day is about cultivating the attitude of the Sabbath. And the attitude of the Sabbath is the attitude of having trust in the Almighty God. Confidence in the Almighty God. Resting in the faithfulness of the Almighty God. That's what it's all about. Trusting God enough to say, if I live this day, whatever I live here, God will take care of it. But let me focus on him. That's what the Sabbath is all about. To say, Lord, I'm willing to let go of all this worry and anxiety and focus on you because I know that you've got my back. That is what it's all about. And that's all the Lord is asking. The question this morning is that, do we have trust in the Lord enough to be able to set aside the day, one single day, and say, Lord, it's all yours. Do we have, do we trust the Lord to that extent? Do we believe in God's ability to meet our need to the extent that we are not going to be doing business and we're not going to be, our hearts will not be so distracted in the presence of the Almighty God. Do we believe him to that extent? Because that is the only way. The trust and the confidence we have in the Almighty God, that is the only way he can release his blessings into your life. Because he will never release his blessings into the hands of somebody who does not trust him. And I pray that the trust of the Almighty God will be renewed in our heart as we begin this new month in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and talk to the Almighty God.